Hallelujah. Write this word down, please. In your journey to prosperity, there are three major things you will need to develop aside from all of these things. Number one, or three levels of knowledge, you must acquire what I call financial intelligence. Part of what I'm giving you is financial intelligence. Please write financial intelligence. Number two, you need financial planning. Intelligence is good, but it's not enough. Financial planning. Number three, you need financial discipline. Today I'm going to announce a few books. I've read a lot of books. But there are a few that I truly believe. You don't need to read everything. But there are a few books that can help you. What is financial intelligence? Welcome to Start Now Channel. We are glad you tuned in today to experience another life-changing encounter in God's presence. The Bible says in Psalm 119 verses 130, The entrance of thy word is that light. As you listen and watch, may you experience the transformative power of God's light. The sum total of all the knowledge and information you will need that helps you understand how money works. The sum total of all the knowledge and information you will need that helps you understand how money works is called financial intelligence. You need financial intelligence. The educational system in Nigeria does not have a structure that provides adequate financial intelligence. For instance, I redefined money for you. I told you a number of things, how that money responds to value. All of these informations culminate in what we call financial intelligence. Hallelujah. Financial intelligence also helps you to develop what we call in business an investor mentality, not a consumer mentality. Financial intelligence. Many Christians in the body of Christ have money, but they do not have financial intelligence. They don't know how money works. There are many churches that the men of God are anointed and God is blessing them, but because they lack financial intelligence, they do not know what to do. I look forward to times when we will not have to talk about this again because everyone will be blessed. We can now concentrate on other aspects of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Financial pursuit is not supposed to be a lifetime pursuit. It's a course when it becomes a lifetime pursuit. What that means is that from your birth to the day you die, you live your entire life looking for money you never found. Some of our parents are 70 years right now. Some 80 years. Ask them what they are still doing. They tell you they are looking for money. My Bible tells me, except the Lord builds a house. It says they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. The watchmen watch it but in vain. The Bible says it is vain to wake up early in the morning. Nigerians and sleep late in the night was the reward only to eat the bread of sorrow the bible says but he gives unto his beloved sleep hallelujah financial intelligence helps you to understand that every time money enters your hand i've, I've explained it part of it is for god part of it is for you and part of it is your is for your future please write it down every money that enters your hand is divided into three one part for god one part for your consumption right now another part for your future if you wear the clothes you should wear tomorrow now you'll be naked tomorrow if you eat the food you should eat tomorrow now you will die hungry tomorrow so write it this is financial intelligence understanding all the information that helps money to stay in your hands Every time money comes into your hands, just know, please look up everybody. Put this as a golden rule in your life from today. Every major money that comes into your life, know that the tithe belongs to the Lord and any other kingdom investment. 
part of it belongs for you today your expenditures and then investment for your tomorrow you cannot forget about your tomorrow you cannot walk into a future you are not prepared for some of our parents are crying and dying right now when they were when they were young land you would sell land maybe 250 naira in our today's money their colleagues were buying it there they were eating and drinking beer and and doing all kinds of things going to the market square and causing trouble so financial planning is often said that he who fails to plan has planned to fail you must know how to plan your resources plan your resources hallelujah plan your resources structure your life there's still one more session the session of wealth creation i'm going to teach you when i teach you on streams of income the secret to oceanic wealth um investment mentality three to five year plan for wealth we'll, we'll round up with that one hallelujah <sighs> financial planning has to do with the execution of your ideas the execution of your knowledge you don't just get up and start doing business or get up and just get a job what do you want in your life look at me let me just give you a bit of the theory of financial planning right how much do you think you will need for consistent cash flow per month please don't write anything that doesn't make sense something very reasonable how much do you think how much do you know i'm not forget about your job or what you are doing how much cash flow do you think you will require to be effective this is financial planning and then you bring together a summation of all your assets and liabilities what are your expenditures what are your expenditures expenditures are the things that take money from you assets are the things that bring money to you if your liabilities are greater than your assets you are going to be broke there's no question about that liabilities are the things that take money from you so if you are buying perfume you are buying a nice cloth that's liability what asset is replenishing the resource that liabilities are taking are you getting me so it's a game of asset and liabilities wealthy people always have more assets than liabilities I don't want to go ahead of myself next week i will we'll be talking of after the last series will be the first week of march we'll talk about the rich and the poor what is the difference between them and then a few things will wrap up that series right i will come back i will revisit these things again financial planning very important you must know how to plan your finances i will teach you when we come back to this I'll teach you the principles of budgeting many of us don't know how to budget you spend as it comes 10,000 you blow it 50,000 you blow it 5,000 we do not understand and it's not our fault you must know how to budget look at me if Sam has 10,000 naira all right and you come to Sam and you say please I want to drink ice cream and Sam says, sorry, I don't have money for ice cream. It doesn't mean he doesn't have money. It's that within his budget, he has structured his money such that there is no room for ice cream. Are you getting my point? When you budget, you will know how to save. You will know how to build your life. One of our sisters in this place, I remember she came and met me. She had been saving years ago and she met me early this year. And she said, I want to buy a plot of land and I looked at her I said what tiny lady like you have you I hope of course you can't say she stole money but she had been practicing some of these principles and right now she went and bought land this is a young lady she's not just waiting and hoping for one man to come and say I married you I paid your dowry keep quiet at her age 
so i will teach you principles of budget that's all about financial planning to know how to plan your life you can't just do it there are many ways you can help yourself to plan finances every time money comes i've taught you part of it is for god part of it is for you part of it is for your future you must develop a futuristic investment mentality you can't just spend and eat everything you are going to build one day you're going to build one day you're going to if you don't have land you are broke i don't care how much you have kings in ancient times were rich because of two things land and people land and people land all the cattle and everything they were together with the land that's why land is called real estate when i teach you on wealth creation i'm going to teach you the trinity of wealth hallelujah we talked about the secret to oceanic wealth we'll talk about all of that multiple streams of income i don't want to go into it the last phase is financial discipline after making all those planning it takes discipline everybody say financial discipline there are so many people january they wrote they, they write a lot of things i want to do this i want to do that but they don't end up doing it maybe your goal this year is to say i want to save fifty thousand or hundred thousand and you are saying that based on the ten ten thousand that is coming for you every month and you made up all fifteen thousand that you will live just within the range see let me tell you something um we'll still do that wealth creation but let me just say it there is what they call in the business world the 70 30 principle please write it the 70 30 principle what that means is that out of the hundred percent of your money that comes ten percent is for god and twenty percent is for savings towards investment the remaining seventy percent is your own whatever seventy percent of your income cannot give you you are not yet ready for it are you getting me now so you can have hundred thousand for instance if hundred thousand comes how much is your tight how much will you save now twenty thousand so you are saving twenty thousand open an account that the branch is not in zaria is one way of helping yourself destroy your atm break it into pieces is one way of helping yourself hallelujah everybody said discipline by and large at the end of every planning is discipline that separates men from boys anybody can say i will do this discipline is the ability to stay on course the ability to abide by your principles you must be disciplined is very tempting you just enter a boutique and you see a very nice dress and you feel like buying it maybe because they are giving discount and you look at 70 percent of your money you budgeted it and you found out that there's no space you can't just say let me quickly touch from that one you see that's indiscipline may god bless our mothers i said it during kingdom wealth summit women are better savers than men true or false yeah it's true it's very true it's very true you can see a woman she can be collecting a salary of twenty thousand, but she can be saving two two or four four thousand and a man who is collecting hundred thousand will come and be begging her and she can bring some money out she won't keep it in the bank she can keep it in women keep money in all kinds of places but at least it works women spend and spend and spend i'm very bad in saving i don't waste money but i i give to a fault i believe so because of that one now I am very bad in saving praise God and so I had to create a system and a structure to help me you must understand yourself and plan and be disciplined some of you right now you came out to pay your tithe and the sincere truth is they send some money for you this is end of the month some of you next month they are going to send something some of you your salaries are coming in begin to save if you're married agree with your wife tell her honey let's we're we are going to plan our future let me tell you something at the end of this series i'm going to give you a five-year plan 
hallelujah within five years if you follow this plan there is nothing on earth that will stop you from being a millionaire five years realistically open your eyes will you open your ears then you'll understand that the Lord is here open your eyes will you open your ears then you'll understand that the Lord is here we believe you were blessed by the message you just watched let us know what stood out to you in the comment section you can also support our channel by liking and sharing our videos so more people like you will be able to watch these powerful messages we celebrate you and see you in our next video. Thank you.